Shopping. Today we're looking at ex examples out of section 1.5 best fitting curves. We're looking at best, best fitting exponential curves and we're going to look at the consumer price index. So obviously we need to plot the data and add an exponential trend line and see the formula, but we're going to look at some other details that show up. If I'm looking at the consumer price index, my exponential formula has a base that naturally starts in the year zero, and talking about the consumer price index in the year zero is kind of silly, and then we'll want to look at years for good projections. Once again, we're starting with the unworked example. So the data for the consumer price index is shown in the book. We'd like to look at that. And when we look at that, we have the data. It's convenient for us to put it in a table in one column because we'd like to take this and do a best fitting curve just like we've been doing before. So we highlight both the year and the consumer price index. We also highlight the headers. We're going to insert a scatter plot. And this is something that looks somewhat like an exponential curve. That's what we expect that the consumer price index increases by a percentage of what's increased before. So we add our trend line just like we've been doing before, except we'd like it to be an exponential curve and we'd like to explain the equation on the chart. We're going to make it larger so we can see. The format that it gives is an unhelpful format. This is 1e e minus 37 e to the 0.0452x. That means 1 times 10 to the minus 37, that's a scientific notation, times exp of 0.4527. Now, the one is only one significant digit, and it's a decimal point, 36 zeros in one. That's what the consumer price index should have been in the year zero, according to our fit, and that's kind of a silly answer. We'd like to have an equation that doesn't refer to something that happens three blocks off the left side of our page. And so what we're going to do is we're going to insert years from base years, and so I want to insert a, a column. We'd like to have a base year. Looking at the data, it looks like somewhere around 1983 is where the consumer price index was 100. So that's going to be our base year. And so if I have an adjusted year, it's going to be whatever the current year is minus 1983. It really doesn't matter where I do my base year. I simply need the base year to be somewhere in the data set for it to be reasonable. But this is a year that will make 100 come out somewhere in that year. So now I have my years are going to 28 years after my base year and 23 years before my base year. The reason for doing that is now when I do my scatter plot, I'm going to get a scatter plot that looks very similar. I want to insert a scatter plot. It looks very similar, except if I look at the x values, my x values are now from minus 30 to 40 rather than from 1950 to 2020. And the reason that's useful is when I add my trend line and I'd like an exponential trend line and I'd like to display the equation on the chart. I want to make that a reasonable size for me to be able to see it, so I'm going to make the font 16. I've got a base year where it was somewhere around 80 and I'm not dealing with the 1 times 10 to the minus 37th. I've got five significant digits. Now I'm going to copy and do what I've done before, my projected, except I need to do all of those things that I did before. This should be 80.334 times EXP of 0 0.44 times 
my year in this case is B2, and that was X, and so I've translated the formula from mathematics into Excel, and this should give me a number that's relatively close. I'm going to make it the same font size. It's relatively close to the years, the values I had. We notice that the projected value goes above and below the actual historical value. But this lets me set up a projected value using an exponential model. I want to change my base so that change my base year so that my base is a reasonable number and typically what I, I want is any value that shows up in my formula should refer to something that's happening in the part of the graph that I'm seeing. And so it's a bit low because when I look at the graph there's not one nice exponential curve that satisfies the whole graph. We'll deal with that in the next example. Thank you.